test to, to test uh, convergence or divergence, we can also get some bounds how fast is the, uh, the series growing. Yeah. So, so this is, this is one, one nice, nice property. So let me conclude with the, with the last thing today. And this is one thing I, I considered uh, ra rather surprising when, when I heard about it. So let us consider some kind of like a series which is growing slower, much slower than harmonic series. So we will consider series of type 1 over p when we are calculating over all prime numbers. So we will pick only, only some of all, all numbers. Yeah. We will pick only prime numbers, take the reciprocal value and we sum these, these fractions together. So we uh, sum 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 7 plus 1 over 11 plus 1 over 13 and so on. And so we are summing much smaller number, much smaller amount of numbers than than in in uh, like uh, general general case of harmonic series, but even though we are summing only few of them, only uh, some 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 subset of all these numbers, even even in such a case, this is enough to to get plus infinity. Yeah, this is enough to already diverge. And uh, I will show you. I will show you uh, some kind of variation of, of Euler's proof, which which uh, shows that. So, so this is one of the one of the famous results of, of Euler. And um, also, it proves that uh, there is infinite number of primes. Infinite number of primes because if uh, the number of primes would be finite, that the sum would be finite. But how can you sum a finite number of, of numbers to get to get something infinite? Yeah. Otherwise, uh, the sum would be would be finite. Okay, so uh, so how to do it? So we already know that one over n is roughly roughly something like like logarithm, and so we are going to use this knowledge to work with one over p. It uh, doesn't sound uh, very like uh, useful right now, so let me work on it a little more and consider some some other completely crazy function. We take something instead of sum we take infinite product. Yeah, meaning we have like many terms and we take product all of them. Yeah? So uh, this this thing denotes nothing else than a1 times a2 times a3 times a4 and so on. And uh, there are some ways how to work how to uh, calculate with, with these products like this. Uh, and uh, there is like uh, definitely many many things known about them, but uh, probably probably uh, there are like more, more things known about about uh, infinite series. But we are going to use one one specific product, and this uh, this product is uh, product over all primes. So p is prime in our case, yeah, and we take product of some kind of, of uh, geometric series of, of type 1 plus 1 over p plus 1 over p squared plus 1 over p cubed and so on. Now, so this is nothing else than geometric series for q equal 1 over p. Okay. And we take a look at this, at this product here. And I claim that this product is nothing else than sum 1 over n. So uh, why? Um, and the reason is the reason is following. So consider some number 1 over n. 1 over n. This number 1 over n 
can be written as 1 over p1 to alpha 1 p2 to alpha 2 we well, can can decompose it to the product of, of prime factors pk to alpha k and now we have the infinite number of these infinite brackets so what we are going to do is in the in the bracket for p1 we take 1 over p1 to alpha 1 yeah? and in the bracket for uh, p2 we take p2 to 1 over p2 to alpha 2 and then so on and from all other brackets for the prime numbers which are not in this in this um, in this uh, in this list of, of uh, divisors of of, uh, of one uh, of n, uh, we pick we pick just the one here. Yeah, so we will obtain one over n there. On the other hand, if we take any any uh, like finite sum which takes only only uh, other terms than one than one from uh, from like uh, finitely many many of these of these. Um, of these infinite brackets, then we will we will always obtain some number one over n, and this number will be unique because there is unique prime decomposition like this. Yeah? So uh, so this is this is the reason why why this this equality here holds. Now this is a geometric series for q equal one over p, so it it converges. And we can sum it. We already know how to do it. So, so this is nothing else than one over one minus one over p. Yeah, which is uh, which is if if we work around it a little more, then we will obtain that this is um, this is uh, this is p uh, this is p minus one over p. So this is p over p minus one and maybe maybe slightly nicer way how to write it is one over one plus one over minus over p minus one now so something something like this and so we would like to show that this is also or uh, this is uh, also some some nice nice thing but it's it is still not very very clear how this relates to to one of to our sum one over p uh, because uh, we already know that this is roughly logarithm of n as growing as fast as logarithm of n but we do not see any relation to sum of one over p so let me make the relation so if uh, you have mm, some product and you don't know how to work with this product it may be a good idea to put some function on this on this product and there is one function which behaves very nicely to product this function is our favorite logarithm now uh, because logarithm of, of x1 times x2 and so on is nothing else than some of these logarithms. Yeah, so if you put logarithm on a product, you will obtain some of simple uh, simple things, some of, of some logarithms. Okay? So we will consider uh, logarithm of, of this product of one plus one over p minus one. Yeah. And so this this thing here is roughly logarithm of logarithm n, yeah. And so we put logarithm on it, and we will obtain the sum of logarithms of one plus one minus p one over uh, p minus one. But now uh, we would like to to give some some simple bounds. So we can do. So this this is called this is logarithm. Okay, this is graph of the function. So what you can do is to bound the logarithm from the top by this blue line. Yeah? So what holds in general that logarithm of x plus one is always smaller than x. 
Yeah, and it's clear we see why it holds if you like put put tangent to the logarithm in this in this point in this point uh, for x equal one, then it will be exactly exactly this thing, and it's always it's, it is always uh, under under this tangent. You can you can prove it as uh, like some small exercise. So so using this, we know that this is this is bounded by sum over 1 minus p which is which is uh, like roughly the same as 1 over p now uh, 1 over 1 over p minus 1 and 1 over p and it, there is no difference between uh, so we know that this thing here already diverges and uh, this thing is growing as logarithm of logarithm of n so it diverges and we know that it, it is dominated by some 1 over p Meaning that sum one over p diverges, and so this is this is the end of the proof, and also uh, the last thing for uh, from today's lecture. Okay, so so thank thanks uh, for listening, and see you.